Hi there, welcome to Untangling Templates. My name is Katherine Presner, and I've been working with WordPress for a very long time, uh, for the last over 10 years as a happiness engineer with WordPress.com, and I'm now working with the training team as part of Five for the Future, sponsored by Automatic. I'm here with Ariel Medana, who has co-developed this workshop with me, and who is also a happiness engineer on WordPress.com. So WordPress 6.5 has been delayed and it will be out now uh, a little bit later than when this workshop is taking place. So I will be simulating what 6.5 will look like with uh, the Gutenberg plugin and WordPress 6.4. So some of the things you might see here, if you're still running 6.4, might not be present. So just to keep that clear. All right, let us look at what we're going to cover in this workshop. First, we're going to go over some definitions that will be helpful in talking about templates. We're going to look at web page anatomy, different parts of the page. We're going to look at different kinds of templates that come with WordPress and with a specific theme. We are going to edit an existing template and see how that works. We're also going to look at how to add a new template type. Then we're going to look at how and when and why you should add a custom template. We're going to look at different ways to manage all of your templates. We're going to go over some blocks not to remove, or at least to be really careful when removing to make sure it's something you really want to be doing. And finally, we're going to have a good section for questions and answers. And we're going to start with what is a theme? So you might already know, but a theme is the underlying framework that defines the overall style and look of your WordPress site. And it's pretty crucial. Why? Because all WordPress sites must have an active theme. Sometimes people say, I want sort of a really blank slate. I don't want a theme. Can I remove it? The answer is no. <laughs> all WordPress sites must have an active theme. And WordPress themes are diverse. They each have unique features and defaults. And they allow you to customize the site's look and feel. And the level of customization you can do sometimes de depends on the theme type. So we're going to look at the two basic types of themes. The first type is a classic theme. This is 2021. And I don't know if anyone um, knows what's special about 2021. If you do put it in the chat. 2021 was the last classic default theme. And what is a default? Uh, what is a classic theme? It's a theme that does not use the site editor to design your site. So this is the standard type of theme that existed before the site editor was developed. We're going to look at the site editor shortly, of course. And on the right, you'll see an image of what is that tool? You recognize it? It's the customizer, right? And this was the way that you would do things like add a site logo or set up menus or widgets. And this is the way that you, in a classic theme, would customize your site. And it was kind of limited, right? You know, you could set up your menu and change the order of menu items, but you couldn't move the actual menu to different parts of your page in most cases. You could add a logo, as you see here. But for example, in 2021, your logo is always going to be centered at the top of your page. So it was much more difficult also to create new layouts. For example, in a classic theme, let's say you wanted to add a sidebar to your blog if there wasn't one already. That was pretty complicated to do in a classic theme. You'd have to get into probably creating a child theme. Uh, you'd have to get into creating a new template. Um, you'd have to know some PHP code, various things like that. So classic themes were, um, it made it much more complicated to customize your theme. So what's the second type of theme? It's a block theme. And what is a block theme? Well, it's a newer type of theme. And it uses the site editor to design the layout and style of all the parts of your site. So you could design your home page. You could set up what individual posts would look like, static pages, et cetera. This is 2024, the latest default theme, which is a block theme. And it lets you also do very handy things like set up a header area with a logo wherever you want it uh, or a, your menu wherever you want it. And that would be, uh, can be consistent across your whole site. 
So unlike with a classic theme, you're not locked into specific layouts that the theme designer has specified for you. You have a lot more flexibility to move things around. All right. You might also hear the term full site editing or FSE. That's an older term. Um, and it means site editing or FSE themes. If you hear that, it means block theme. Um, but the generally accepted term these days is block theme rather than FSE theme, but it's the same thing. As I'm speaking, thank you, Ariel. Ariel will be putting links into the chat. I will also post these links when the uh, recording is posted on wordpress.tv so you can have them there if you don't feel like copy pasting them out as we go. All right, another term I wanna define is a pattern. And we're gonna look at where these are in the editor in a moment, but patterns are basically uh, a feature that come with the site editor and they are pre-designed groups of blocks that form a layout. So it's sort of like a chunk of a page, or it could even be a whole page uh, designed by somebody else. You can also create your own patterns and you can find patterns in the site editor. You can also find patterns in the page editor and the post editor. So these are patterns also called lock patterns. And there's different sections of them you can find about page uh, patterns or uh, footer patterns, things like that. Now, you're here for templates. So finally, what is a template? A template sets up the structure and the design of different parts of your site. For example, this is something called a front page template. And a front page template is automatically applied to your site's front page. And for example, you might have the header at the top, that's the area in red, your content in the middle, your footer at the bottom, and it's laid out in a specific way. Here on the other hand is a single post template. This automatically drives the look and feel of every individual blog post. So it works by pulling dynamically in the content from your posts and displaying it like this. So the area in your posts editor is here in the content editor and the header and the footer is the same on every single post. So you might have your, your date, your author name, featured image, etc. And you can design this however you want. So, you know, for some templates, they are automatically applied to the dynamic part of your site that is being generated by WordPress. So for example, this is a page 404 template, and it's automatically applied to a page not found. So if someone types in a, a bad URL or reaches a dead link, um, this template will be driving the look and feel of that page. This is a, a real uh, advancement because, you know, to edit your 404 page template in the past, you had to open the file, edit it, upload it to your theme, make sure it's in a child theme, otherwise you're going to lose all your changes. So this is so much easier than it used to be. I find this amazing. All right, let's go into the demo part now. This is, this is, uh, I love interaction because uh, I think, you know, screenshots are great, but actually looking at the site and looking at things together is another thing entirely. Okay, so here's our demo site. And you might recognize this as being 2024, the default theme that we talked about. We have some dummy content. This is food connection. We've got our, uh, our homepage here with some static content. And then we've got our blog posts down here. And we've got an about page and we've got a contact page. So this is what our demo site looks like. We've got our header up here, logo, et cetera, navigation bar, our footer down here. All right. So we're gonna go into the dashboard. So if you've never seen the site editor before, it's under appearance. And do you notice what's missing here that you might have expected to see with a classic theme? What's the tool here? Um, customizer, there's no customizer here. So you do see editor. So we're gonna go into the editor. All right, now we're in the site editor. And this is the section which shows us different things we can customize in the site editor. We're gonna go into templates because that's the focus here. Now, if you are have not yet um, updated to uh, you know, the uh, beta versions of 6.5, or you're not running Gutenberg plugin, uh, this might be new to you. We've got 
two sections of templates here. We've got the default templates up here, and we've got a section called custom. So default templates are templates that come with WordPress core. And I'm going to go through some of these. And then we've got custom templates. These are templates that are defined by the theme. So in this case, they're defined by 2024. 2024, for example, offers uh, a page with a sidebar. So let's say you want to have certain pages with a sidebar. You have that here in 2024. It's a custom template because this isn't something you're going to find in every theme. Um, or a page with no title. Let's say you want some pages to have no title. You can use this template for that. Now up here, we've got the default templates. So I'm going to go through some of them and explain what they are. I'm going to click on all archives and you'll notice this is in alphabetical order. Click on all archives. So one thing I want to point out is that you've got the definition of the template up here at the top left. So if, if you're ever not sure what a template uh, does, what one of the core default templates does, you can read the blurb here. So all archives says that it displays any archive, including posts by a single author, which is also called the author archive, categories, tags, etc. So it also serves as a fallback when a more specific template cannot be found. So WordPress has sort of this waterfall, meaning that WordPress looks and sees, is there a specific template to display categories? If so, use that. If not, fall back to the next, you know, the next one. And the next one would be all archives. So you can see here on the right that, uh, you know, it displays in a grid by default. And we've got our pagination at the bottom, featured image, etc. All right, we'll open this in the editor. So I just clicked right in, by the way. So there's two ways to edit the template. You can click right on the right in the preview area. Or you can click this little pencil icon here that says edit. Both will do the same thing. I always recommend opening the list view. That's these three little lines here and opening some of these to better see how the page is put together. So this is list view. And once you open these, you can see the blocks that make up each of these um, templates. So if you can click on one, you can see, oh, this is a featured image. You can also look over here on the right and see. And so, of course, you can edit this as you can with any other uh, page in the editor. You can edit this. So if you want to change um, how this is arranged, you can do that. So that is really amazing because, again, this would have required editing a PHP file. Um, it looks like someone's having trouble seeing my screen. And so maybe Ariel can do a little bit of troubleshooting with you uh, directly, because I think probably others would have mentioned that you cannot see my screen. I'm assuming everyone can see my screen. Um, so I'm going to keep going through and hopefully you can get that sorted. So I'm going to go back. Um, okay, everyone else can see my screen. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Had a small moment of panic. I, I think I, I think somebody would have told me before. Uh, so going back down the list, we've got the blog home. The blog home you can think of as your posts page. So this is the page which is set as the posts page under settings and reading. And you know, you can add other stuff to it. So here the blog page is set as the home page, and we've got our posts down here. And we'll keep going down, category archive. So this is a template that I made. 2024 does not include uh, this by default. I made this earlier. And it is what displays the categories, category archives. Index, index tells you here it's a fallback for all pages and posts uh, when a more specific template is not defined. So let's say you install a plugin that displays posts in certain ways, but it didn't include a template for that. It'll fall back to index usually. Uh, we've got our 404 template. We looked at that in the screenshot before. So page not found, here it is. And again, if I click into it, you can see that you can, you can edit this. So you can say, oops, page not found. And then you can save it up at the top right. And it tells you what template is being saved. 404, are you sure? You say yes. And that's it. We've just edited it. And pages is a very important template. Pages, as it says here, uh, displays all your static pages, unless you've overridden this for a specific page. 
So we can see here on the right, we've got, I'm going to open this up. We've got our um, title here. We've got a spacer, we've got our featured image, and then we've got our content, which is a very important. All right, we'll, we'll get back to this a little later, explaining why this is locked. We're just going to keep going through the rest. Search results pages. Again, this was challenging to edit in pre, uh, you know, in classic theme days. Now you can just edit it. Let's say you don't want a search box. You can just remove, delete that and save it. You can do whatever you want. It's, it's just so amazing to me. <laughs> um, single posts is for individual blog posts. This, if you remember classic theme days, this is the equivalent of single.php back in classic themes. And so those are all the um, default templates. All right. Now, if you scroll down here, you'll see something that says manage all templates. And I want to show you a little bit about how to use this view. So this shows you all the templates mixed together. So both the default ones and the custom ones. It doesn't tell you which are which in this view, but <laughs> the, the ones that came with 2024 don't have a description. So that's how you can tell, or the ones that are specific to 2024 rather. And um, so you can do a couple of things. You can search. Let's say you want to uh, look for the single template, but you don't want to scroll all the way down. You can type that in and you can find anything with the word single in it. You can do a uh, bulk edit. Let's say you want to, so this is, you know, similar to bulk edit in WP admin. You can click and right now the only option to bulk edit is um, delete or reset. Uh, delete means, you know, you, if you want to delete a template that you created, now notice that some of these say author 2024. These are the ones that came with the theme and some of them have my name. So remember I mentioned, I created category archives template earlier. You can only delete templates that you created. You cannot delete templates that came with a the theme. Okay. So that's sort of a, something built in to prevent you from, you know, getting rid of a, a necessary template. Um, so I could delete the, uh, I could bulk delete the one that I created. Um, you can also, there's a couple of other actions here. If you click the three dots, this is a new feature with 6.5, or if you're running the latest Gutenberg, there are now, there's now a revision history in the templates. And this is, this is amazing because it allows you to, let's see what happens. I'm going to click here, view revisions. Just like with posts and pages, it allows you to see your re revision history. All right, so this is a bunch of code, you know, like other revisions, stuff that was removed is in red, stuff that was added is in green, added or changed. So, and you can restore. So this is again, a new feature. It's really cool. Uh, it's also when I click that button to return, it brought me to the template itself. You can see that the revision history is also here right on the, uh, right on the template. So you have access to it from a number of places. Uh, I'm going to go back here, just go back to uh, manage all templates. Um, so yeah, I think this is all that I wanted to show you here. The other, the, before we leave this though, I do want to show you options. So this little um, settings area here or options area here, if you click on it, there are a couple of, these are new to 6.5. You can now view templates as a grid. So if you're more visual and you want to have a little preview of what they look like, you can use the, the uh, this view. Again, you can delete from here and you can um, edit items in bulk this way. So you want to edit two items, you can delete, reset. Reset, by the way, is what previously was called clear customization. So if you were looking for the uh, what is in 6.4 called clear customizations, it is now called reset. So uh, a little tricky, but um, now that you know that, hopefully that'll be helpful. Uh, what else? So again, under the options menu, you can sort, I'm going to just go back to table view. You can sort by uh, author. So if you want to see um, all the ones that came that uh, 
I created uh, grouped up at the top. You can sort it that way. Um, you can remove fields. Let's say you don't want to see the author. Now the author's gone. And you can, for, let's say you have a ton of uh, templates, you can view more of them per page or less of them per page. All right. Okay. So the different ways to manage your templates here. Also just want to quickly mention template parts. So in a template, the chunks that are in purple, header and footer in this case, are template parts. And they are sort of subsections of a template that can be applied in multiple templates. And those now live under patterns. So if you're looking for them, I think this was moved previously, but just, just if you've never seen this before, they're under patterns, manage all template parts. So they are here, okay, if you're looking for them. All right, let me just see if there are any questions. I think Ariel's taking care of this. Um, Okay, let us continue. So now we've looked at the different types of templates. We're gonna look at editing an existing template, which I kind of did really quickly before, but we'll, look, we'll go into more detail now. So let us go into templates, pages. So again, I'm gonna click right into it. This drives the display and look and feel of static pages, okay? I'm going to open the, the really important part is this middle block here, this middle group block. So I'm, I promised you that I would talk a little bit about this lock icon here and why it's so important. So what have we got on a page? And I want to, I want to go to, we'll go to the about page for this. You see, we have the header, we've got the title, and then we've got our content, which consists of some paragraphs and pictures. Go back to our template, you'll see that all that is being pulled out of here. We've got our title. If the post had a featured image, it would be displayed next. This post is, uh, there, sorry, page. This page does not have a featured image, so there is not one directly below the title. But then, you know, there's all our content. Now, it's locked because it's a very important block, as you can as you can probably guess. If I were to unlock this, first of all, there's two types of locks, a movement lock and a removal lock. So you can prevent it from being moved around or you can prevent it from being deleted or both. I'm gonna uh, uh, uncheck prevent removal and apply. You'll notice the lock goes away. It shows that it's unlocked. And I'm being very cavalier here. I'm like, I don't need this. I'm going to delete it. Well, notice <laughs> you are going to be warned when you, when you are trying to delete a block that you probably don't want to be removing. So it says deleting this block will stop your post or page content from displaying on this template. It is not recommended. So, you know, there are these, uh, you know, <laughs> There are these warnings built in to try and really discourage you from doing doing this. Um, but let's say I don't care. I'm pretty sure I want to remove it. I want to delete it. And I even want to go ahead and save it. What do you think is going to happen? Does anyone want to type in the chat or just think to yourself in your head? If I refresh this page, what do you think we're going to see? Let's see if you're right. Refresh our content's gone, right? Our content's gone. Why is our content gone? Because we removed the content block and it's going to be the same on the contact us page as well. All right. Now the home page is different. The home page is using the blog home template. So it's still going to be there, but the pages that are using the pages template content's gone. So a couple of things we can do here. We can, um, there are no revisions showing yet because <laughs> It's only, you need two or more revisions to be able to have a revision history. I, I it, it does not sound super logical to me, but that's the way it is technically. So that's why it's not there. However, you can use the undo button. All right, undo up here, undo. And here's our content block back. And we go undo again and undo again. Let's see if it put the lock back, but yes, it did. All right, so you could, you could have always put this back manually 
by saying, you know, clicking this little three dots and going add after insert. But since we just done it, I just did um, undo. So we're going to save it again. And so the moral of the story is watch out when removing the content block. Uh, nine times out of 10, you are, you shouldn't be <laughs> deleting it. All right. Okay. So what else? Let us go into the archives template. And there's another block that typically shouldn't be removed. Okay. So all archives, click into it. I'm going to open the list view and open up these blocks. So this is the other block that often should not be removed. Interestingly, this one is not locked. I'm not sure why, <laughs> it probably should be. Um, you can lock it if you want, but it is driving the, let's go back to the homepage. I'm going to go to a blog post down here and I'm gonna go to a tag archive, uh, let's say wine, all right? This is the tag archive for any post tagged wine. Let's say we remove the query loop block. Again, we do get a warning, so it's not locked, but we do get a warning. If you remove it and save it and refresh the tag archive, again, content's gone. Why? Because the query loop block outputs the blog posts in this archive. If we've removed it, there are no more blog posts to be displayed. Now, if we go and look at the category instead of the tag archive, it's still here. And the reason it's still here, does anyone know why? Looking at the templates, the reason that the category archives are still showing is that I created a separate category archive. So remember I talked about the waterfall? If, the, if a more specific template exists, which it does in this case, the category um, template, it will be applied. If not, it'll fall back to the archives template. Since the category archives does exist, that's what's outputting this. And that is why it's still displaying things because we did not remove the query block from the category archives template. I hope that is clear. <laughs> Let us go back and put that back. All right, so that's back. Another thing I wanna show just very quickly, this is, this is a new feature. There are, there's a little toggle here, or not a toggle, but uh, two little tabs. We've got block settings, if, you're, if you've got a block selected, and we've got template information. So when you're in the template, you can see the same description explaining what the template does here. And we have this transform into now. This is, this is new. If you want to um, have a different look, it'll apply a different pattern. So right now we have a grid like this. Let's say we want a list like this. Click that bingo, we have a different look. So this transform into is a way to quickly apply a predefined uh, pattern. So that's, that's super cool. So let's save that. All right. Um, now we have a revision history. So again, this is another way we've got two uh, revisions now. So we can click on this if we want to go back and um, revert or go back to a, a revision. We can do that in that way. All right. Uh, another tip I want to give you is that you can make multiple edits to a template and not save them until you're ready. So I've just made one change here. I've toggled off the archive type. I'm going to go back. It reminds us, wait, we haven't, we haven't saved it. Okay. But I don't want to save yet. Again, it's prompting us uh, review one change, but I don't want to save it yet. I want to go into single. I want to um, put an exclamation mark. I'm going to go back. Now it tells us we have two changes. So it's kind of an interesting thing where you can review all your template changes at once and see. So I just click this button at the bottom left. It says there's two site changes waiting to be saved. And it reminds you what you've done. You've made a change to all archives. You made a change to, uh, in this case, a template part because we added something next to the category, which is part of a template part called post meta, and we can save them all at once. So that's kind of neat. All right. So that's some changes and things you can do in existing templates. Let's now look up at how to create a new template type. So let us go back into 
templates. So again, just as a quick recap, these are, you know, core templates or default templates from WordPress that this theme comes with, or that we have added in the case of category archives. And there are custom templates that 2024 came with. To add a new template, we can do it from right from here. We can also do it from manage all templates, add new template. When you click on add new template, you can see some different types of pages. Um, you can add a front page template. A front page template, and I noticed there was a question about a front page template. Front page template will override anything else you have set on the front page. So if you create a front page template and put some content in there, that's what will be displayed. It's the equivalent, again, if you're used to um, classic themes, it's the equivalent of front-page.php. I believe there's a dash in there. Um, it's the equivalent of that. It overrides any other template. You can create specific archives template for date archives. So for example, your monthly archives or uh, yearly archives, uh, you can create uh, a template to apply to a single post. But in this case, I wanna show you the example of an author archives template. And again, these are this is a fallback template. So we're gonna create a template for all authors and we're going to choose this one, it gives us the option to choose a, a pattern, which sort of jump starts the creation of our template. So we're not starting from a blank site editor, or you can skip this if you do want to start from a blank site editor and do it from scratch. We're going to choose this one here. And again, so just to drive this point home. Um, Oh, actually, you know what? I had removed, I had previously removed the author's name from this. Let me quickly add that back. Oh, actually, hang on one second. <laughs> Let me just do something. Sorry about this. I had made this change. I'm gonna add the author's name here. Um, I'm going to go add after and I'm going to type author name. Okay, I'm adding author name there. Okay, and refresh. Okay, so pretend the word by is there. Oh, and this is not clickable. Hang on one second. So there's a there's a setting on the author name to link to the author archive and the author archive is where we're going to see our author archive template. Okay, sorry about that. So now I'm going to refresh. So now you can see that this is clickable. So empty template. Okay, we're we are in a sort of liminal state here. I've created the author archive, but I haven't um, saved it yet. So just pretend we didn't see that. Okay, so we've got the author archive template here, but I haven't saved it yet. Um, I want to add right after this, I want to add the author bio. And the author biography is pulled from the user profile. I'm going to save this, save it. And now when we click my name, hopefully, yeah. So we created an author archive. This is the display of my author archive. So it's all the posts that I have written. It's got my bio here. I love templates so much that it's hard to contain my excitement. I'm not being sarcastic. I do love templates. Um, so, and that is, that is coming from users profile down here bio okay so that's it's pulling it in from there um, but let's say we didn't want that template let's say there was no author template existing i'm going to go here i'm going to go manage all templates let's delete it all right delete it so the point i want to make here so we're deleting the template i just made i'm going to refresh we revert back to the archives template. So just because there isn't a specific author template, it doesn't mean the author uh, archives won't be displayed. It's displayed, but it's using the default all archives template instead, all right? Which looks like this, which looks like this, and the difference is that it doesn't have the bio, okay? So um, what else? Okay, we're going to move on to Custom template, and then we're going to do Q and A. So custom template, let us go back to 
manage all templates, add a new template. So you'll notice that down here, we have the option for custom template. So when might we need a custom template? Let's say we have a landing page or something we wanna display in a special way on the site. First thing to do, let's say I have a landing page and I, I don't want the landing page to have a header and footer. I wanna to link to it from social media. I don't want people to be distracted by navigating to other parts of my site. The first thing to do is to look through your templates and see if a template already exists that meets your needs. Okay, so you don't wanna duplicate stuff that is unnecessary. So I'm gonna you know, look for, it's often called a blank template. I typed in the word blank up here. I don't see anything. So again, what did 2024 come with? It came with a page with no title, page with a sidebar, a wide image, sidebar. Again, this is not what we want. We want a page with um, nothing on it really, except our content. So we're gonna add a new template. We're gonna go for a custom template and we're gonna call it landing page. All right, we're gonna create it. And there's two ways we can do this. We can, we can start with a blank slate and add stuff, or we can start with a pattern and remove stuff. I'm gonna go with the pattern way, okay? But you can do either. Click the pattern. I'm gonna open the list view right away. I don't want a header and I don't want a footer. So I'm gonna click the three dots next to header here, delete click the footer, click the three dots. You can click the three dots either here or here, both do the same and delete. I don't want a featured image. Um, I don't even want a title. I don't even want any of this. I'm gonna remove this whole group and delete. And actually I'm gonna undo. I do want a spacer because it's a little tight to the top of the page otherwise. So I'm gonna remove this, I'm going to leave that big spacer and remove that one. This is what I want. This is gonna be my landing page template. I just basically want a little bit of space and then the content on my page and I'm gonna save it. All right, that's as simple as it is. This, this would have taken a lot longer in the classic theme days and you would have had to, uh, to edit code. Now, where's this page that I want to apply the um, custom template to? Let's go into pages. You'll notice that there is a page announcing a mobile app. I'm gonna open it up. I previously created this page, rather Ariel previously created this page. It is encouraging people to download this app, explain the app. Um, now, interestingly, it already says landing page. This is because I think earlier it had the landing page on it and we removed it. Pretend it didn't have that. Let's, let's say normally you'd come in having never created a landing page template before, and the pen template is pages. It is by default using the pages template because it is a page, but we can change that. Let's preview what this looks like. So what it looks like by default is this, all right? It has our header, then it has our content, and then it has our footer. Um, I noticed one thing right away, which is that I am gonna want the, um, the title. But we'll, we'll, I'll show you how to change this in a second. Okay, so we want to get rid of the header and footer. So we're going to apply the landing page template we just made. So I'm gonna click on this. I'm going to say swap template. And notice there are a few things you can do from here. You can go directly to the pages template and edit it. You can even create a new template right from here, which I don't recommend because there's a few little gotchas. So I would avoid creating a new template from here and you can preview the template. I wanna swap the template and notice it allows us to choose from four different templates. The three that came with 2024, page with sidebar, page no title, page with wide image. The three that came with 24 that, 24 that can be applied to pages. There was one other, but that's only for posts. And the first one here, landing page. This is the one I just made. I'm gonna apply it. Now it says landing page. I'm gonna update it. And you can probably guess what's gonna happen. What are we gonna lose here? Refresh. We lost our heading, our, our header, our footer, and our title. So I misremembered something. We're gonna go back and we're gonna go back into the editor. We're gonna go back into templates. 
we're going to go back to our landing page. We're going to edit it and we're going to say add before. Um, actually, I'm going to do this in the list view. <laughs> I want this to be the title block. Um, now we get into a little bit of padding issue, but pr pretend this is aligned. <laughs> pretend this is aligned with the content. Uh, you know, it's all the way to the left. We'll fix that later. But this is how to apply the template to the page. And we probably want to go back and, and make sure we get that green going behind, or maybe we want a different thing behind, but that, that gets into styles, backgrounds. Um, uh, sorry. Anyway, let's clear that. I, I don't want to get us sidetracked. Okay. But that's basically how to apply the template to the page. Um, one thing to keep in mind when you switch themes, if you switch themes, you lose your custom templates. Because remember we said these are templates that either came with the theme or that I created. Um, they're specific to this theme. So just watch out. If you switch themes, you'll lose your templates, but you won't lose your page and post content. So that's one, that's one reason some, somebody, you know, asked, why wouldn't you put the, if this is my landing page, why wouldn't I put all this content in the landing page um, template? Just put it inside there. Well, you could, but you'll run into a couple of issues. One is if you switch your theme, you will lose all your content because it was not in your uh, page editor. It was in your site editor. And the other is, what if you want to create a second landing page or a third landing page? You have content there. Uh, if it's empty like this with the content block, you can apply it to as many landing pages as you like. So I think this is more flexible and uh, less risky and more portable. So, um, and the other thing to note is that this um, template, and I think I showed you this before, that template goes into the list of templates here. And if you go my landing page, if you go into manage all templates, it is here as well with my name. Okay. Now let us go to, just to summarize a couple of important things to remember that in block themes, you use templates to customize the look and feel of various parts of your site. And before creating a new template, make sure you check to see, does your theme already come with a template that you, uh, that you could use instead before creating one? And be careful because in most cases, you should not remove the content block or your query loop block. There might be situations where it does make sense, but in most cases, these are the blocks that pull in dynamically generated content from places like your posts and pages area. So if you remove them, you will be removing content uh, that you probably don't want to remove. Um, Ariel just made a really good point in the chat, and I'm going to say it out loud so that uh, you can all hear it when you watch this recording. Um, if you switch themes, you will lose custom templates, but if you reactivate the same theme, the templates will come back. So this is an excellent point. If you, if you forget, you switch themes you, you, and you lose your, your, some content uh, or your... Um, if you lose some content or your uh, template and you want to get it back, you can switch back to the previous theme and you will get back uh, that content. So, all right, I think that is it. And we have sped through this. I hope it wasn't too fast. Um, Ariel is going to paste in a whole bunch of links so you can grab them in the chat. Again, I'll post these in the um, meetup um, event as well as on the wordpress.tv uh, post when it comes in, when it uh, gets posted. Um, and now we will move on to Q&A. I see a question from Ed. So Ed, I'm gonna read your question and then hopefully answer it. Is there a reason why we can't duplicate custom templates? Sometimes I wanna have a new template with a minor change from an existing one. I have to create a new template, then go back and copy out all the elements from the template I want to duplicate, which can be time consuming. I agree. It would be amazing to have a duplicate option here. And I'm guessing that's on the radar. I don't know for a fact, but it would make perfect sense that once the very basic things like deleting and revisions, um, um, you know, and resetting have been added, which they will be in 6.5, that they will look at, the devs will look at adding a duplicate um, template option, because I think that's an excellent idea and I don't see why we shouldn't have it. Barry says, I, how can I add PHP to a template? 
I'd like to add PHP to automatically update the copyright year, but I don't want to rely on another plugin. I think you're, I, for security reasons, I don't know if you're allowed to add PHP code without a, a plugin uh, to it to anything in, in WordPress in the in the editor. Um, it's it's a good question. I know that there were uh, plugins that would allow you to add snippets of PHP back in the classic theme era, and you could do that in a widget, you know, widget to add PHP. I don't think that's a thing yet in the site editor. I could be wrong. I've never heard of that. But um, for security reasons, it's you know, allowing people to add chunks of PHP. It's not super great idea, but I understand the use case, and I I totally agree. It would be nice to have a, an updatable copyright year. Um, oh, Carla. Hi, Carla. Has an excellent question. When you export a site, are custom templates exported as well? Yes, this is a super cool thing. And I'm so glad you asked that because I wanted to mention it and I forgot. When you go to tools, export, and when you export all content, it, ex it now exports your templates. So that's amazing um, because, you know, I had to move this site from one install to another and I wasn't sure if the templates would come with but they did. So it was fantastic. Uh, it's a really, really handy. It doesn't specify that here, um, but, uh, but it does now. Uh, thank you, Ariel, for pasting in all those links. Oh, Laura has added that for now, you can, if you want to duplicate a template, you can copy paste the blocks from one template into a new template. Yes, that is the way to do it. And I think, Ed, that's what you've been doing. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, as I like to say, better than a kick in the pants, but not the ideal method for sure. Uh, Barry has a question. I see that 2024 offers different custom styles for the website. Can I add or change custom universal styles? Okay, that's a great question. Not really a template question, but yes, uh, that is more in the styles area. So... Uh, in the, sorry, I'm just kind of going quickly here. In the editor, if you click styles, it comes with, these are called style variations is the name for these. And if you click the pencil, you get a little welcome to styles. And in this panel on the right, which you can also access when in the site editor by clicking this little icon here, you can edit these. Um, I do not think you can add your own style variations without touching some code. I could be wrong on that, but I think for style variations, those are in the file called theme.json. So that's more of a code thing, but you can modify these. So you can, um, you know, you can, let's say you're not crazy about this specific shade of, of gray for the captions or, uh, you know, charcoal for the buttons. You, you can change that, which is um, really cool. It's just that um, you have to do it this way. Oh, Laura, excellent. Laura just recorded a lesson about global styles, which should come out next week. Thank you, Laura. That's amazing. There are lessons and tutorials about just about everything or lots of things. So that's, that's awesome. Thank you. Uh, what else? Oh, interesting. Anne says to get a copyright year, you have to create a block. So a custom block. And there's actually a tutorial on that subject on wordpress.tv. Fantastic. I did not know that. So um, you can check that out. Look, go to wordpress.tv and look for that tutorial. Awesome. So Jennifer says, so we can't copy the custom template to a cloud library to share between sites. I don't think you can do something like that right now. You would have to export the uh, the templates and import it into another site. I don't think there's something like you can have a template live in the cloud and share it. That sounds like a great idea. Again, maybe that's something in the future that will be possible. Um, all right. Okay, a flurry of questions, I think. We've answered them all. Are, is there? We have nine more minutes. Isn't that amazing? Um, oh, Laura says, Cadence has a cloud to share pages, et cetera. Okay, that's interesting. I don't know if there is a thing, uh, a way to do that with templates yet. 
you know, the site editor is still relatively new, so it's in um, very active development and some things are still, I call them, you know, in their infancy. And so, you know, I, the other thing I want to say is that, you know, even, even things like um, the reset icon, uh, things are changing rapidly is what I'm saying. So new features might be added if you want to experiment with Gutenberg, a plugin on a test site. You can see what's coming. For example, you know, right now the reset icon and the revisions icon look the same, which I think is not great because it means you can accidentally do one instead of the other. And so there's an issue on GitHub to, to make them different, um, to avoid confusion. Uh, that's an example of something that probably won't be changed before 6.5, but uh, is being worked on actively. So if you do run Gutenberg again on a test site, probably, uh, you'll see that there. Um, oh, thank you, Matt, for the copy copyright block tutorial. That is awesome. Um, I am going to actually save this whole chat <laughs> so that I can uh, paste some of these links in the in the um, in the event when I paste them in because there's some extremely useful stuff here. Uh, somebody asks if I teach weekly. I will. I will now be teaching monthly. Um, actually, something I wanted to point out is that I will be repeating this workshop. If you arrived late um, or if you um, just want to attend again, <laughs> I'll be doing this again next month uh, at the end of April. And so different monthly workshops from here on in as well. So I love doing workshops and I'm happy to be doing them again. We have six more minutes. What else? I don't want to waste any any moments of time here. Um, you'll notice that sometimes these three dots, this is called an ellipsis menu or a kebab menu as well. Sometimes they're not active and that's when there are no uh, options available. Um, something I didn't point out, you can rename a custom template right from here. This is super cool. Let's say you don't want it called landing page. Let's say you want it called blank. You can rename it right from here and bingo, it gets recategorized. Uh, and you can also see revisions from here now because I have more than uh, two or more revisions at this point. You, I, I, I guess I can understand why you need two or more revisions to see this one, two. Uh, I don't know. I would prefer if it was active even with one revision, but that's a, that's a core thing. Um, what else? Let's go back. Let's go back. Thank you, Beverly. I'm glad this was useful. I think that's it. I think I think we've reached the end. I, I feel like I was talking very fast. I hope it wasn't too fast. Um, and uh, and I hope you learned some stuff. I hope even the folks who uh, are more experienced with templates learn some things. And I hope to see you again at another webinar in the future. Yes, this session will be posted. This session will be posted on wordpress.tv and I will add the link to that once it's up in the meetup event. So if you come back to the meetup in the comments, there will be a link to the uh, session. I'm gonna stop recording.